Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series on Bayesian confirmation theory and the paradox of dogmatism as part of our larger series in Bayesian epistemology. In this video we're going to be looking at entailment. This is going to be conditionals and implications in Bayesian epistemology. This may be one of the most complicated videos in the whole series, so if you're not caught up, you should do that now. So, entailment is basically an implication, if there's an implication between the hypothesis and the evidence that you're looking at. And what we're going to look at is what you can conclude about the evidence and about the hypothesis if you have that implication in place. So, if H entails E, then E is going to confirm H in most cases. Think about that for a second. If H entails E, so if H implies E, if H then E, then seeing that H is going to confirm, or rather seeing that E is going to confirm that H. This may seem like assuming the consequent here, but it's not, and we're going to look at why. The couple of caveats that we're going to put on this that we're going to examine near the end of the video are this works so long as our initial degree of belief in E is not 1 or 0, and our initial degree of belief in H is not 1 or 0. If H entails E, then basically what that means, translated in a kind of Bayesian language, is that our degree of belief in H and not E is zero. We have no belief in H and not E, because that's the only way an entailment can be false, if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. If our degree of belief in E is not one, then our degree of belief in not E and not H has to be greater than zero. So our degree of belief in H contingent on E must be greater than our degree of belief in H. If that was a little confusing, just spoken out in words, we're going to take a look at some numbers and some specifics that hopefully are going to put a little bit more of a face on this thing. So imagine that H is, it is raining. Probability that it's raining. Our initial probability of that, we're going to call that X. Not E is going to be John does not have his umbrella. Probability of not E, initial, we're going to call Y. Now, we have the entailment. If it is raining, then John has his umbrella. If we look at all of these things, what that means is the probability of H and not E must equal zero if that entailment is true. There's no way that it could be raining and John not have his umbrella. That's just what entailment means. It's also going to mean that y is going to be equal to the probability of not E initial and the probability of not H and not E. Because basically the only possible outcome if John does not have his umbrella is that it is not raining. Because it's impossible for John to not have his umbrella and for it to be raining, if John does not have his umbrella, if that evidence is not the case, then the hypothesis must not be the case. That's just following modus tollens. And the only possible outcome, if it is raining, is that John, in fact, has his umbrella. If the last one was modus tollens, this is modus ponens. It's basically saying that the probability of E and H initial is always going to be equal to the probability of H initial, or X. So, with that in mind, saying that H implies E and E and H don't equal 1 or 0, we'll look at those cases at the end x is going to represent h, y is going to represent not e. We've already said that the probability of h and not e, so the probability of this conditional being false, is zero. We have zero degree of belief in that. That means we can fill in this x also as the probability of h and e, remembering that that can't equal zero or one, and y as not h and not e, also remembering that can't equal zero or one. Then we can fill in the probability of not h as 1 minus x, just going down that total column. And in the same way, we can fill in 1 minus y as the probability of e going across that total row. And finally, the probability of not h and e is going to be 1 minus x minus y. The important thing to note out of all this information is that our probability of e is going to be less than 1 and greater than 0. Because y can't be 1, it's impossible for it to be 0, because 1 minus 1 is the only thing that would give us 0. 
And because y can't be 0, it can't be 1. The probability of e can't be 1, because only 1 minus 0 would give us 1. It has to be, in fact, some number in between 1 and 0, because our degree of belief, our y, can't be anything other than 0 through 1 inclusive. Once we've chopped off the endpoints, it's just 0 through 1 exclusive. It's important to remember for our next step. So, we already have the probability initial of h is equal to x, the probability initial of not e is equal to y, and the probability of e and h initial is equal to x. And we want to now check out the probability of h final, or the probability of h given that e. Well, we can use Bayes' theorem once again to find this. This will go ahead and give us x over 1 minus y, which we found out from the last problem is going to be what our probability of E initial is going to be. And we know that X over 1 minus Y has to be greater than X. How do we know this? We can tell this because 1 minus Y is going to be a number in between 0 or 1. Anything over a number in between 0 or 1 is going to be greater than that number. It's going to get bigger. So our final probability that h, our x over 1 minus y, is going to have to be greater than, is going to have to be bigger than our probability that h initial, or our x, which means this has to confirm, our evidence has to confirm the hypothesis based on the entailment. Or, in other words, because 1 minus y has to be a number less than 1 greater than 0, x over 1 minus y has to be bigger than x. Therefore, if the conditional if it is raining, then John has his umbrella, is true, and we are not certain if John has his umbrella or it is raining, then John having his umbrella confirms that it is raining. It provides support for that. It makes it more likely that it is raining. It should, if we are being inductively rational, give us a higher degree of belief that it is raining. So, now that we've dealt with the general entailment case, we're going to talk about the specifics of why certain things can't be 0 or 1. Imagine that you're certain that it is the case that John has his umbrella. You are certain that E. In this case, discovering that John has his umbrella would not change your opinion on the subject at all. You're already certain. Therefore, such evidence would do nothing to confirm the hypothesis. Therefore, the probability of not E initial can't be 0. Let's take a look at that. So if we already have, because of our entailment, that the probability of h and not e is 0, but then fill in the rest of our column for not e as 0, there's no way we can confirm with e that h, because we've already said that e is the case. No matter what we do, e has to be the case. We haven't seen the evidence, but we have the certain degree of belief in e. So then seeing further evidence isn't going to make us be more convinced that e. So it's possible for this not to confirm if we already believe that e. If you have a degree of belief of e of 1 and a degree of belief of not e of 0, you are not going to confirm h by believing that e, or coming to believe that e, or seeing that e is the case. Basically, if you're already certain that some evidence is the case, then that evidence being shown to you will not cause you to change your degrees of belief. That seems to make sense intuitively. If you already believe something to be the case, it'd be strange if you seeing that change your degrees of belief in other propositions. Conversely, imagine now that you're certain that it's not raining. You're certain that H is not the case. Once you've reached this conclusion in order to stay Dutch book rational, no evidence can change your mind. Therefore, if your initial belief in H is zero, then neither E nor any evidence will confirm H for you. You can never come to believe it and be rational, because you're already convinced that H is simply not the case, that it's not raining. So no matter what you see going on, you're never going to be convinced that it's raining because you're already certain. Once again, we fill in a zero here, but this time we're going to zero out that top row saying that H is not the case. We're certain that H is not the case. It should be clear that changing our probabilities from not E to E, there's no way we're going to change what our belief is in H, because our belief in H is zero across the board. If it's zero total, with or without E, it's not going to be anything different with E or with not E. So, 
the probability of h also cannot be 0 for our evidence that e to confirm h. In other words, if you're certain that a particular hypothesis is or is not the case, then no evidence will ever confirm it, disconfirm it, or cause you to change your degree of belief. Now this curiosity goes a little bit deeper and we're going to talk more about these in the objections to come. If you're certain that not E, then even if you're shown that E is the case, you cannot stay rational and hold that E. Nor would this evidence confirm the hypothesis or even convince you of it. If you are certain that John does not have his umbrella, even if you see John with his umbrella, you cannot rationally change your mind nor will this confirm for you that it is raining. In fact, you can't even rationally conclude that it's raining if you see rain, because you're already going to be committed to a very specific situation. It'll go like this. If E and H are both going to be zero, we zero out this column for E that causes H to zero out as well. The only possibility that you can believe in, if you believe the conditional and believe the probability of E is zero, is that John does not have his umbrella and it is not raining. And you, if you are certain that that, there is nothing that can change your mind about it. Similarly, if you're already convinced that H, no evidence can ever confirm or disconfirm it. Therefore, E will not confirm it. If you are already convinced it's raining, then seeing John with or without his umbrella will do nothing to your belief that it is raining. Interestingly, you're actually committed to John having his umbrella in the case, and no evidence can rationally persuade you otherwise, even seeing clear skies or John without his umbrella, which would seem to contradict that. If we have our conditional, it zeroes out H and not E, but we're saying that we're certain that H, we're certain of the hypothesis, so we have to put ones through there which will zero out our not H row and our not E column, having the only possible thing we can believe is that both H and E are the case. Basically, unlike deductive rationality, where once you discover that you hold contradictory beliefs, you can change them, in inductive rationality, once you believe something for certain, if you ever change that belief, you are irrational, and you can't do anything to change that. This is because the rational process of changing beliefs is exactly what's at issue. What we're talking about with Bayesian epistemology is what you have to do to change your beliefs, the rational process to change your beliefs. So if you change your beliefs for a reason other than those proscribed in Bayesian epistemology, you are being irrational, and we can show that you're being irrational with a Dutch book. It may seem irrational to hold on to something in the face of changing evidence, but if you're certain that something, that's what that means. To be certain of something means that no matter what evidence you see, you have to hold on to that belief. So that was entailment in Bayesian epistemology. Next up, we're talking about Bayesian dogmatism, and then the new paradox of dogmatism, which hopefully you've gotten a little hint at already. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org. Check out the SEP for more information on Bayesian epistemology. All of the information I'm getting from this series is coming straight from the SEP. So if you want another source, check that out and stay skeptical, everybody.